Good afternoon for the four of the CME. This is Chris Robinson with Wednesday's commentary here today in the grains. Well, if you followed me last week, I was concerned about the possibility of a correction, especially in soybeans. Lo and behold, we did. We had about a 50 cent correction from the recent highs. That was that accelerated after the USDA. So you had that move down. Um, you still have the managed money very, very long. In the past six weeks, they've gone from being net short. 400,000 contracts spread out in the in the uh, grain complex to net long 400,000 contracts. So that's a tremendous swing, and that's helped propel us up um, in corn, wheat, and beans. However, you can see there's an old expression: a bull market needs to be fed every day. You know, it's like a, a bonfire needs to have fresh oxygen, or it dies out. So sitting here Wednesday, uh, I'm, I'm watching prices, you know, backfilling. So right now we're, we've got a situation where um, we've got a lot of longs in the market, okay? They probably have deep pockets ready to add to it again, but you've had this correction. And uh, I think moving forward, the next two weeks, you could have two-sided trade. We're waiting for the next big USDA, which is on the 29th of this month. That's uh, planning intentions. That's where the farmers tell the USDA what they're planning on, on uh, putting in the ground. The concern is that farmers are going to plant a couple million more acres of soybeans uh, rather than corn because of the price discrepancy between the two. Um, long story short, I think that the number one thing you've got to recognize is this market has been really fueled by two things. The drought in Argentina, which got a lot of people uh, in the bullish story. We had dryness here in the, in the plains with Kansas City hard red uh, winter wheat. That crop in Kansas City is at a kind of a precarious point right now. If they were to get a good rain in the next two weeks, one or two good rains, um, that wheat will come back like nobody's business. It doesn't take much to bring a wheat plant back to life. So that's your, that's your concern is that right now it doesn't look like we have a crop. All of a sudden the rain comes and you've got a, 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 an average crop. So. If you go from having supply concerns to plenty of supplies, supplies, the price is going to correct. So as a, as a producer, you need to be taking protection. As a speculator, if you're long, you need to make sure that you've got protective sell stops so you don't go to bed one night and watch wheat drop down 30, 40 cents and watch your profits disappear. So we've had good moves in the wheat, over a dollar in the wheat. We've uh, had a 40 cent rally in corn. We had over a dollar 30 rally in soybeans. We've already given back uh, uh, 50 cents of that. So right now we're in that teeter totter. And again, uh, from my perspective, we're looking at what's going to be the next bullish item to throw some uh, some gasoline or some kerosene on that fire to get it going again. Right now, the the boat is leaning very heavily towards the long side. You've got managed money long. You've got farmers long, and um, we'll see. I mean, this could be a year where we continue to grind higher, but the problem is uh, a bull market needs to be fed every day, and if, if that doesn't happen, you start to see this backsliding. So um, that's really what I concentrate on here in the next two to three weeks in the grains. There's some other activity in um, crude oil as well as uh, cattle. I'll probably talk about that next week, but I think uh, by and large, I would continue to watch these grains we're getting movement, which we haven't had for a long, long time, and movement represents opportunity. Got to remember that. This is Chris Robinson top, with Top Third Ag Marketing. Give me a call. Uh, look me up online, Chris Robinson, if you need some help with your hedging. Have a great day.